So Leite, and welcome to this um, lesson, this video lesson for chapter 10, Capitulum Decimum. We're going to look at infinitives, uh, and while we're at it, we'll just take a look at imperatives too, because imperatives or commands are made from infinitives. So an infinitive is the to form of a verb. So when I say to eat, to love, that's a present active infinitive. If I say to be eaten, that's a present passive infinitive. If I say to be um, to be loved, to present passive. And if I say to write, that would be present active again. All right, so if I run through this list of principal parts, I just wanna show you something because in previous chapters, a lot of times verbs have been given as um, singular third person forms or plural third person forms. For example, you might have amat and it would say he, he, she loves or amant, they love. But at some point you've got to start learning about what are called the principal parts of verbs. And since we're doing infinitives, um, which the present active infinitive is one of the four principal parts, I thought we'd just talk a, a little bit about principal parts. Not much to tell here. But there are four principal parts for a Latin verb. We have principal parts in English too, although they're not usually studied as such unless um, you are studying English as a foreign language. For example, in English, uh, the verb swim, the principal parts are swim, swam, swum. Swim is the present tense, swam is the past tense, and swum is the past participle. Sing, sang, sung would be another example. Sing is present tense. Uh, sang is past tense. And sung is the past participle. One more example. Write, wrote, written. Write is present tense. Wrote is past tense. And written is the past participle or past verbal adjective, we could also call it. So Latin similarly has principal parts, but instead of three, they have four. Um, so going through this list, amo, amare, amawe, amatum, those are the four principal parts of the Latin verb to love. Amo means I love. Amare is the present active infinitive, and that means to love. Amawi is the perfect uh, form, I have loved, okay? And then amatum is a perfect passive participle which is a little bit like our past participle, and so amatum would mean loved or having been loved. Teneo would thus mean I hold, tenere to hold, tenui I have, have held, tentum held or having been held. Then mito, I send, mitere to send, misi, I have sent, misum, having been sent. Capio, I take, capere to take, KP, I have taken, Coptum, having been taken. Audio, I hear, Audire, to hear, Audiwi, I have heard, and Auditum, having been heard. Now, you don't need to worry about the ones in parentheses right now because at this point in chapter 10, we're not going to be using them for a while. But the first two, we will. So you want to say, I do something frequently, and that's got the O ending on the end. And then the second form, the second principal part that ends in RE means to do something. That is useful. And um, so let's just run through the chart of these. Present active infinitive for AMO is AMARE. You see the chart there. It's under the heading active infinitive. Now AMARE is a present active infinitive to be specific. It means to love. Now, if you look back at the principal parts, you can see that that comes directly from the second principal part. It is the second principal part. That's what it is. Likewise, tenere comes from the second principal part of teneo, mitere from mito, copere from the second part of copio, and audire for the second part of audio. So that's where they come from. If you go and look up one of these Latin verbs in a Latin dictionary, or if you see them in a vocabulary list, um, this is normally how you see them listed. Occasionally they will list the infinitive first instead of after the present tense I form, but usually uh, it's second, okay? And we call it the second principal part. So I want you to think to yourself how you would translate amare now. 
So hopefully you thought to love. Now how would we translate tenere? Hopefully you said to hold. And then for mitere, capere, and adire, similarly, to send, to take, to hear. Essentially, if you have an RE on the end of the verb form, that is your present active infinitive, and it means to do whatever the verb means. Now, look at the second column under this chart, singular imperative. This is a singular command. You want to tell somebody to love or hold or send or take or listen. How do you do that in Latin? Well, you say ama, tene, mite, cape, or adi. So I want you to look at those singular imperative forms and figure out how you make them in Latin. So how do you go from the other verb forms to get these singular imperatives? Hopefully, you figured out by looking at ama and amare that what you're doing is taking off the re. Similarly, tene, we've taken off the re from tenere. Mite, we've taken off the re from mitere. Likewise for cape and audi. Now, uh, we can also give commands to more than one person, so a plural imperative. In English, this doesn't change. I can tell one person, hold the book, and I can tell two people, hold the book. Hold is the imperative. It's singular imperative and plural imperative. There's no difference in the spelling or the pronunciation of those imperatives in English. In Latin, there is, though. If you're talking to more than one person, you need to change the way the word is said and the way it's written. So look at this list of plural imperatives, amate, tenete, mitete, capite, and audite. And first I want you to look at the ones that are black and see what the pattern is there. How do we get to amate, tenete, and audite? So hopefully you noticed, basically we're adding two letters, T, E. We're adding that to the singular imperative form. Uh, you could also think of it as taking the RE off of the present active infinitive and replacing the RE with a TE. Now I want you to look at the two that are blue and I have one letter underlined and think what is different there. What is not following the basic pattern? Well, hopefully you're noticing that that underlined vowel I seems to have changed. Uh, the singular imperative have mite with a short e, and then when we go to plural, instead of mitete, we get metite with an i. Likewise, instead of capete, what we actually get is capite with an i instead of a short e. So that's the irregularity there. That's why those are made in blue. Um, these two verbs, mito is what's called third conjugation, capio is what's called third io. Verbs of these types tend to be a little irregular in different ways, and it has to do with the fact that they didn't ever have a strong vowel in the first place. Uh, there were a consonant stem instead of an, a vowel stem. So you get a strong A in verbs like amo, amare, strong E in verbs like teneo, tenere, and then you get a strong I in a verb like audio, audire. But in mito, mitere, capio, capere, there was no strong vowel. So the vowel kind of changes. Sometimes it might be a short E, sometimes a short I, sometimes a short U. So that um, you know tells us we've got to watch out for it, thus the, the blue. The last column there, the passive infinitive, also important in this chapter. How do we make a present passive infinitive? Well, we have a list of these, amari, to be loved, teneri, to be held, miti, to be sent, copy, to be taken, and adiri, to be heard. So I want you to look at that list and first look at the ones that are black, Amari, Teneri, and Adiri. See if you can figure out how it is that those passive infinitives are made from the active infinitives. So as you look at these, hopefully you have noted the amari, teneri, and aldiri all end with a long i, whereas the active infinitives all end with a short e. So what we're doing is we're replacing the short e, amare, 
turns to Amari, Tenere, to Teneri, and so on. Now I want you to look at the two that are blue with the underlined vowel, and I want you to think to yourself, what is different about these two? How do they not quite follow the normal pattern? So hopefully you have figured, it's sort of like the others because you do have a long I at the end, but it's different because with Amari, Teneri, and Aldiri, all we're doing is replacing the final E of the active infinitive. With Miti, we take off the whole ERE, right? You just drop the last three letters and then add the long I. With Kapi, similarly, we drop the last three letters and we end up with just Kap and then add the long I to that, Kapi. So more of the word is sort of disappearing, being swallowed up by the passive ending there. Again, this has to do with the fact that the vowels are so weak in these um, words. Uh, originally, it probably would have been something like mitre and capri, but um, the R would have just disappeared from existence. So basically, um, again, uh, because of the weak vowels in these words. You don't need to worry about that too much. If you're interested in you know, historical linguistics and how languages evolve over time, it's kind of an interesting thing to note. But really all you need to know is these two are different, they're special, and the special thing is that you have to get rid of the last three letters instead of the last letter, and then add the long I. All right, well again, the main things in this chapter are the active infinitive, passive infinitive, so amare, to love, tenere, to hold, mitere, to send, capere, to take, audire, to hear. They all end with the letters re. Passive infinitives always end with the long i, amari, to be loved, tenere, to be held, miti, to be sent, copy, to be taken, and audire, to be heard. Hope you uh, understood that, learned a few things about infinitives and about imperatives. Walete! Well,